Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is the return to Distro Wars. And today we're going to look at two distros from the same group, the same family, Linux Mint and Linux Mint Debian Edition. Some people have asked me to do a side-by-side -side comparative of them, and I've done quite a bit of comparisons and reviews of each of these. Of course, I use Linux Mint in production on two systems. My traveling web design, actually we're up to three now. My traveling laptop that I use when I'm traveling to get real production work done, that runs Linux Mint 18.3. The video production computer that I'm running right now is also 18.3. And my in-house work Linux computer that is done for web design stuff is running Linux Mint 19.3. And so I have a lot of experience on that. I have run Linux Mint Debian Edition in production on uh, test systems uh, a few times in the past. And I have a couple of plans to test it out in the future as well. Our question is, oh, how do these two distros compare? And they are becoming closer and closer. So first, let's go ahead and have a look at the website. And uh, of course, if you head on over to the LinuxMint.com website over to your download tab, then you have the option to grab, go with Linux Mint 19. This is the one based on Ubuntu or Linux Mint Debian Edition, which is the one based on uh, based on uh, Debian, of course. What's that? What's LMDE based on again? I forget. No. All right. So the uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition LMDE only has a Cinnamon version at this point in time, but we have a 64 and a 32 bit. Linux Mint 19.3 still does have 64 and 32 bit, but is projected in the next release. That's probably not going to be there anymore because Ubuntu has dropped those in ongoing editions. And since this is based on Ubuntu, we, we will probably see the loss of the 32-bit in the next edition. I've not heard for sure one way or the other. Now, why do they do Linux Mint Debian Edition? What this is, is it's their backup plan. These guys are some of the most prepared people for the progress of change. They've built this up, Linux Mint Debian Edition, exclusively looking at the goal from their blo release blog post. Its goal is to ensure Linux Mint would be able to continue to deliver the same user experience and how much work would be involved if Ubuntu were to ever disappear or <laughs> lose its ever-loving mind. Um, so somebody did ask me that in a, uh, in a comment, why so much hate for Ubuntu? And understand, I don't hate Ubuntu. I'm saddened by the direction it goes. I love Ubuntu. But it's just taking turns for the worst, uh, starting to add some telemetry that even when you say don't send data, it still sends, sends data. It just sends data to say, hey, this guy said not to send data. Uh, but that's still sending some data, and I find that still problematic. Uh, also, the deep core integration of Snap packages, even to the point where you can't even install Chromium without Snap. So it's becoming more difficult because of the distribution method that Snap uses. Linux Mint doesn't do that, and so they have to work harder every iteration to remove the Snap packages from Linux Mint because they do not want there to be any Snap packages. Now, if you want to use Snaps and Linux Mint, you can still install it. It's available. They just don't want to include it in the system. They're going with flat packs instead. And uh, of the three, flat pack Snaps and App Images, I prefer App Image, then flat pack, then Snap. But a lot of things are going towards the snap packages, and that is makes some people in the Linux community worried because they're even saying we're not focusing on auditing the code anymore. We're focused on trusting the developers. And then who are the developers? <laughs> the very people most of us are switching to Linux to avoid, like Microsoft and Facebook and Spotify producing their official apps as snap packages. Sure, they're not going to be putting, you know, weird, crazy, you know, viruses packed into the stuff, but they're going to put in things that we in the Linux community do not like. And that is another reason why I love Linux Mint is because they take a very, very strong, firm stance against any form of data collection. And they've always committed to that and they will continue to commit to that. So they're always uh, working on Linux Mint Debian Edition. In fact, in my opinion, the only things, in fact, I really only know of two major things on the user level interface that can't be easily done on Linux Mint Debian Edition that can be done in uh, the Ubuntu based version. That is number one, changing the kernels from the update manager. And number two is installing proprietary drivers. I have heard uh, under the, you know, through the grapevine that they are looking at doing a GUI interface 
for driver installation on Linux Mint Debian Edition. That will completely cinch the deal for me because I don't necessarily advocate changing your kernels around a lot anyway. Security updates, yes, it does get security updates. Be aware of that. Kernel security updates do come through the Linux Mint Update Manager. We just don't have the ability to change the kernel, which I don't recommend people do unless there's a very good reason to, and you still can do it in Linux Mint Debian Edition. It's just not as easy to use. Now, once we move beyond that, the uh, the installation process is a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and explain the process here, rather than uh, rather than uh, uh, show you on the screen, just because these are are two subtle nuances to the system before we get into it, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, and boot into the systems. So the installation process, obviously Linux Mint, uh, based on Ubuntu, utilizes the Ubiquiti Ubuntu installer. The Linux Mint Debian Edition has its own installer, which is absolutely fabulous. It is a very good installer. And so what we have in this is in the Ubuntu version, you have the ability to install multimedia codecs during the installation. That's not something you can do in the Debian edition, but they've added a GUI um, codecs installer in the, um, uh, in the uh, welcome screen. So frankly, it's, uh, uh, frankly it's, it's still you know, just as, just as good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and have a look at, um, <clears throat> one of these guys first, <laughs> and then we'll go have and have a look at the <clears throat> other one. And then, uh, we'll kind of show you our goal here is to show you that these are so similar. You're going to have a very hard time figuring out which is which. Of course, if you know what little tiny nuances to look for, you will be able to figure it out. But here we are on the Cinnamon desktop. Both of these guys are going to be running a new version of Cinnamon. That's one of your advantages why you'd want to run Linux Mint Debian Edition instead of Debian with Cinnamon installed. Newer version of Cinnamon, and you're always going to get the latest and greatest out of Cinnamon um, as you move along. So here is our update manager. Um, so there was, uh, if you were paying attention, your context clue, which one we're running. Ha ha ha, if you missed it, <laughs> I'll tell you about it later. So we have uh, everything else is uh, is going to be very much the same. So we can uh, just have a look at how the systems look. We have a variety of different wallpapers here. They've always done the best job of just giving us the most beautiful wallpapers you could possibly imagine. So uh, just uh, a variety of, of things, or we can just go right on back to our to our basics and uh, stick with what we had to start with. They both are going to have very similar theming. So if I go into our system settings, your theming is going to be the same on both of these guys. So you can see we have the X, the Y, and the Y dark. We have the variety of different colorations. So these basically exist just so you can do the full-on theming of your uh, of your uh, system here. So we'll go ahead and do uh, we'll do the uh, red across the board. All right. Let me go with this one here as well. So now we have uh, we have red uh, red theming across the board. Uh, I don't like, uh, I've never liked these basic Linux Mint icons. Uh, oh, never been a big fan of those. So we'll just go back to, we'll go back to that just for the, for the sake of the fact that I, I like these ones better. All right, so there we are. So we have a nice, uh, a nice layout here. And uh, with all of the rest of this here, we can see our, uh, we have all of the basic tools we would expect. These are things that some people are going to call bloat. Derek, are you on? <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, some people say say they're bloat. I don't like. I do uninstall some things. I hate Redshift, so I'll I will uninstall that. But as far as giving us tools like USB stick writers, formatters, character maps, that just showed up in my recent uh, video on writing done right. Um, I showed people the benefits of character maps. Uh, we have a few other tools in there as well. Here's our graphics. We have drawing, pixels, simple scan. Here we have Firefox browser, hex chat, our basic office suite. Let's go ahead and have a look at which office suite we are running right here. Uh, celluloid rhythm box. So pretty much all of the things that we would expect to see here. Let's go into help. It looks like we are running 6.1.5.2. 
All right. And uh, as far as your software manager, they are going to have the same software manager. So very nice software manager. You can type in anything that you are looking for. You can narrow into uh, various accessories and things, and it will tell you if something is coming from a flat pack or from a snap. So if I do a Caden Live, not a snap, um, the repository. So here, if I do a search for Caden Live, we have a flat hub version and we have a non flat hub version of Caden Live. You can install either one of those. All right. Now, the next thing that we might have inside of our system settings, nearly everything else in here is the same. There's one thing missing here in one of them that does not appear in the other. So there's the other context clue. So basically, that is what we're looking at. You will have a very hard time telling which one of these is which. Um, of course, like I said, the installation is different. If we boot up the welcome screen, then uh, one of them does have in the first steps an extra item that is not in the extra item if you've already installed it. So again, from this, you're not going to be able to tell which one this happens to be. So we're driving home this point here that it is going to be, these two are so similar you will have a hard time guessing which one is which. Here's your traditional modern layout, update manager, system snapshots, system settings, firewall, and things like that. All right, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and uh, boot this guy down, and then we will boot up the next one and have a look at the next one. Okay, and here we are on the other one. Like, what has changed? That's a very good question. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at your update manager here. And, uh, ooh, look at there. There's your hint. There's your hint. You just saw your hint again if, you're, uh, if you were paying attention. Uh, our software packages are going to be basically the same. In fact, I dare you to find the difference here. So drawing, pick, simple scan, internet. Uh, here's our internet tools. Office tools. Let's go ahead and boot up Libre Writer. Let's see if that can provide us any context clues as to which one we are using and uh, were using. And let's go up here into about and oh, look at that 6.0731. Oh, I think I must have just given it away, haven't I? Sad, sad, sad. All right. Um, and let's see, having a look at our software manager. It's going to be basically the same. It's going to take a second because I this is the very first time I'm launching it. I had launched it previously on the other one. All right. So once again, everything is exactly the same. We can still have a look. Let's look at Caden Live again, not Caden Line. Caden Live again. Again, we have our non our uh, non flat pack and our flat pack versions. So everything is good there. We are up to date. And let's have a look at our system settings. Uh, once again, our themes are all exactly the same theming options. Not going to notice any difference over there. Having a look down at the bottom, we'll notice that there's an extra tool under administration that you probably just missed. Ooh. So with all of those guys in mind, uh, what you can kind of see if now if you're using this in production, what you're actually going to find is that they're going to be pretty much the same. Now, Linux Mint, the Ubuntu version, might actually have a harder time playing some wine games and things because they don't have the 32-bit software installed in default. You need to go in and add that back in. Debian keeps it all in there. So it actually, it might work better with wine games, just a hint if you're trying to work with building something for wine or things like that. So the question happens to be, which one was which? Did you spot it? You might be thinking this is Linux Mint Debian Edition because of that older version of LibreOffice. That is not correct. This is Linux Mint based on Ubuntu. Yes, the Debian Edition does have a newer version of LibreOffice. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but yes, this one here is the uh, this one here is the uh, Linux Mint based on Cinnamon. Uh, Linux Mint based on Ubuntu, I should say. Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon, you can see that. The other one, the first one we looked at, was the Linux Mint Debian Edition. As far as once these guys are installed and set up, you are going to have an almost impossible time distinguishing one from the other. The only place you're going to have any issue is when you are needing to install a proprietary driver 
maybe setting up the media codex, although it's in the welcome screen. It just wasn't there because we'd already installed it. And if you need to change the Linux kernels, those are going to be your primary differences. So overall, I think that this team is doing an amazing job. Which one is better? It kind of depends on the philosophy you want to take. I'm still using Linux Mint based on Ubuntu for most of my production stuff, although the one based on Debian looks as though it's becoming much more promising. Sure, the Linux Mint based on Ubuntu has the ability to integrate PPAs, but there's actually ways around that. I can install the latest LibreOffice on Debian just as easy as I can um, as I can on, on the Ubuntu version. Ubuntu, I use a PPA. I use a .deb for um, uh, for the uh, uh, Debian-based version. So you're going to have a very hard time distinguishing which one is which. They're doing an amazing job. These two are now almost indistinguishable. The installation, again, is a little bit different. I would still say if you are a brand new user coming to Linux at the time similar to, you know, about when I'm recording this video, I would probably still encourage you to go with the Ubuntu one uh, just in case you have any hardware issues. But they are both becoming very much the same. So excellent job. Uh, hat is off to you guys in the Linux Mint team. Great job on this release. And it was hard to tell which one was which. So thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Which one you think is going to be better? Have you used them both? Let me know all that fun, jazzy stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. That would help out this channel quite a bit. Leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you hated it. And tell me about your items and grievances in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.